Hello students and welcome back. Now we are going to quickly discuss two other flip-flops that we have. One of them is called D flip-flop and one of them is called T flip-flop. So in this video, we are going to discuss the functionality of D flip-flop. D stands for data and T flip-flop where T stands for toggle. And we are going to see that how do we implement both of them in Verilog. So let us get started. When we talk about D flip-flop, here we call it D because D stands for data. So this is the most basic or the simplest flip-flop that we have. Here there is only one input which is D and one output Q. The output of Q is assigned the value of D at every triggering edge whether it is a positive edge or negative edge of the clock. This is the simple operation for a D flip-flop. Now let us have a look at the truth table. The truth table is very simple. I have one input D and I am assuming my present output Q as also one of the input. So now whatever is the value of D, the same will be the value of Q of T plus 1 that means the next output value. It is independent of Q at every positive or the negative edge of the clock Q of T plus 1 will be assigned the value of D. The second flip-flop that we have is T flip-flop. Here T stands for toggle. That means we are going to toggle the value in some conditions. So here I have one input which is called T and if T is 0 then we retain the value of Q. Whatever is the value of Q, it will remain same. But if T is 1, then we are going to flip. We are going to toggle the value of Q. Let us look at the truth table of a T flip-flop now. So here we can see that we have two input variables. One is Q and one is T. And we can observe whenever T is 0, Q of t plus 1 is same as Q of t. But whenever t is 1, then Q of t plus 1 is negation or the invert of Q of t. So this is how a toggle flip-flop operates. So now we are going to implement both of these flip-flops using Verilog in Vivado. I have the code ready for D flip-flop. So first of all what we are taking, we are taking two inputs, one is D and one is clock and we have one output which is Q and as a good practice we are defining that Q is a register. The code is very simple. We say always at the rate positive edge of the clock, you can also choose negative edge that is all up to you begin and end this is the begin and end of this always block and we say q is equal to d so this is the simple code and now let us check the simulation the simulation environment is ready now so first of all what i do i allocate clock as a clock from 0 to 1 with a time period of 100 nanosecond then for d I will allocate a clock 0 to 1 with a duty cycle of some random number between 50 to 80, let us say 72. Okay, that means we are not synchronizing with the clock. And here, the time period also, I am not synchronizing with the clock. And I am taking something random like 564. Okay. So that means D and clock they are not synchronized with each other. And then we will run it for at least 2 or 3 thousand nanoseconds. So I run it 3 times. So this is 3000 nanosecond. Now we zoom it and here are the simulations. Now let us check them very carefully. So first of all what we see here is the rising edge of the clock. Whatever is the value of D 
same is the value of q this is the rising edge this is the rising edge now here the value of d is changing but we can observe q is not changing it will check only at the rising edge at this rising edge if it is 1 it is 1 now look at this rising edge it is 1 so it is 1 here d is changing but q will not change it will change only at the rising edge this thing can be observed throughout the waveform now let us code t flip flop so for that we are going to create a source a design source and we call it t flip flop and here our inputs will be t and clock and output is q so that's all and we create it as a good practice you should always close your simulations and schematics once you are done so i am closing the simulation here once the simulation is closed we go back to our source window and locate the t flip flop and we set a top module here and in the simulation also in both the places we set it as our top module so now we start coding for the t flip flop here also the coding is going to be very easy first of all we define that q is a register then we say always at the rate let us take negative edge this time negative edge of the clock this is begin and end so we are going to use if else we say if t is equal to 0 okay what should we do then we say q is equal to q and else q is equal to negation of q so that's it uh, this is our simple code for t flip flop we save it and then we are going to check the schematic the schematic is ready here we can see that there is a register here which is having clock and t as the inputs and the output is coming back with the flipping effect as well the more important thing is to check the simulations and let us check those now the simulation environment is ready we are going to repeat the same thing clock is 0 to 1 50% duty cycle 100 nanosecond for t we are going to take a clock 0 to 1 some random duty cycle and some random clock period okay and we run it for adequate time we have run the simulations and we find something very disturbing that means q is always x q is not updated at any moment what is the reason the reason is our code what we have done here we have simply written that if t is 0 then q is q otherwise q bar but what is the value of q which will be reserved or flipped we are unable to decide that what should be the initial value that will be preserved and then only we can keep it or flip it so whenever you have this kind of code where the output is depending on the output value then we have to define some initial values of that variable as well so before we start allocating anything we will start one more block and that is initial that means we are defining the initial conditions and we say begin and end and initially we say q is equal to 0 so this is the simple allocation that if we do then what we can 
save is the initial value of our variable in the simulation that will be saved for all the simulation. So now I have rerun the simulation and you can see Q is already allocated to 0. I will define clock as a 100 nanosecond pulse and I will define T as something different and we run it and now we check the simulations so here we can see at every negative edge because this is triggered at negative edge at every negative edge of the clock we are going to observe the change in t okay if t is 0 this is 0 then q will not change but if t is 1 then 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0. At this negative edge, 0 becomes 1. At this negative edge, 1 becomes 0. So Q will flip as long as T is 1. But when T is 0, this region or this region, Q will not change. So students, now we know about SR, T and D flip-flop. Let us talk about one more flip-flop and that is JK flip-flop in our next video. Keep learning. Thank you.